In today's video, we're gonna look at the new ASI Air Pro. This little device, along with your smartphone, is gonna replace your laptop, so you cannot take your photos with your dedicated astro camera, you can do a polar alignment, you can do guiding, and you can even do some go-to functionality if your mount supports it. First, let's just take a look at the unit itself to give you kind of an idea of how it looks. And on the front, we have a DC 12 volt input, so we'll need some type of uh, external battery and a 12 volt power adapter which you can get from ZWO. On the other side, we have four different DC 12 volt outputs. So this is pretty cool because you can connect four different devices now, uh, their power cable directly to the ASI Air. For example, if you have a dedicated Astro camera, you can plug in your power cable between the two and control your camera's cooling directly through the ASI Air's app. That's mainly what I'm using it for. On the front, we have our different USB ports and an ethernet jack. And then we have a dovetail plate here, which you can put either on the bottom or the side. And you can mount that in a variety of different ways, depending on how you want to go about it. But that's a quick look at the ASI Air Pro body itself. Next, I want to show you how to actually set all this up, because it can be a little bit confusing if you're still a beginner. First, we need to power the ASI Air Pro. And unfortunately, the new version does require a 12 volt power adapter rather than a USB cable. And I want to thank those who pointed out I was actually using the wrong cable in one of my earlier videos. Thanks to them, I'm up and running now with this cable right here. If you don't know the technical term, good luck finding this because I spent an hour and I couldn't find this exact cable. But it's a DC 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter cable on the one end. The other end is kind of like that carport cigarette lighter thing. And uh, it's only like 10 bucks for this. This will allow you to plug your ASI Air directly into your battery and keep everything powered correctly. And if we look here, I'm using the Jackery 240 watt hour battery. And there's a lot of different power inputs here. We've got the USB, you've got the AC. That's the way I was originally doing it was through that AC port. But now, thanks to those who pointed out I was doing the wrong thing, I'm plugging it directly into the 12 volt outlet right here. And I guess that will help reduce the power consumption and just keep things running better. You don't need to get the Jackery. There's plenty of cheaper batteries out there that'll do just a fine job. For example, there's a Celestron power tank. I think a lot of people are using this one. And if we zoom in, uh, we have, I guess not gonna let me zoom in, but we have the two 12 volt power ports right there among some other options. You can even make your own battery. A lot of people like to go that route. For me, I, ne I need something simple because I'm not uh, an electrician by any means. So I'm just using this battery here, plugging this cable, the one end into my ASAR Pro, the other end into my Jackery here, and that's gonna keep everything powered, including my camera's cooling system. So that's gonna keep the ASI Air running throughout the night. Next, we need to power our dedicated Astro camera's cooling system. And you'll see there's a DC 12 volt power input on the back there. All you have to do is plug in another DC power cable to that. And the great thing is we can plug the other end into the ASI Air Pro. There's actually four DC power ports here on the side. You can plug it in any one you want. And I wanna be clear here, that cable I'm using to connect the camera to the ASI Air Pro, you actually get like four or five of those cables in the box with the ASI Air Pro. And that's what we're looking at right here. So you don't need to go out and buy anything like that. It's gonna come with the ASI Air. And again, this is gonna control our camera's cooling, which we can now do from our smartphone app, which is really nice. We don't need a laptop to control the camera's cooling system. Moving on, we have the filter wheel here. This is gonna be much simpler. All you have to do is plug in a USB cable from the bottom of the filter wheel into your dedicated Astro camera. And this cable should have come with a filter wheel. I think even the, the dedicated Astro camera comes with a cable like this too. So you shouldn't have any trouble getting that cable there. And then you'll plug in the other end to the back of your dedicated Astro camera, just like that. And now you can control your filter wheel from the ASI Air Pro, so that's really nice. Finally, we need to connect our dedicated Astro camera to the ASI Air. So we're gonna use this little USB 3.0 blue cable. One end's obviously gonna go into the camera, and then the other end's gonna go into one of the blue ports here on the front of our ASI Air Pro. At this point, we've now pretty much connected all the different cables that we need to, and things should work properly. So I just want to give you a quick overview again of all our different cables and make sure you followed along exactly. Because like I said, there's a lot of cables involved now, so it's possible you might have missed something. But we've got the 12 volt power adapter cable goes from the ASI Air. That's going to control our cooling. 
and that's connected to the dedicated astro camera. We have the USB cable from the filter wheel going into the dedicated astro camera. And then we have the USB cable from the camera going into the ASIR Pro. Once all the cables are connected, we can now power on the ASIR Pro. Make sure your battery's turned on first, and then just hit the power switch here on the ASIR. Once you've done that, it'll take about 10 seconds to start up and begin generating its own Wi-Fi network. You're also gonna hear a really loud, annoying beep. That just tells you everything's working properly. Now that the ASIR is generating a Wi-Fi network, we can grab our smartphone, go to our Wi-Fi settings, and find that network. It's usually listed ASA or something or other. Once you click on it, you'll need to enter a password, which is 12345678 by default. And if you do that all properly, you should now be connected to the ASA or Wi-Fi network. Now you can finally start up the app on your smartphone and we can really dig into all the different settings. So here's our initial screen. This is gonna allow us to set up the main camera, the guide camera, our focal lengths and everything else really. So for my main camera, I'm using the ASI 1600 Pro. I would normally be using a 120 mini for the guide, but I didn't have it connected in this case. Your main scope focal length, today I'm using the Space Cat, which is 250 millimeters. You can put in whatever yours is. And then for the filter wheel, we're using the electronic filter wheel. So we wanna make sure we select that. You also just wanna double check your latitude and longitude are correct. And that your mount here, you'll just need to pick your correct mount. If you're using a SkyGuider Pro Star Adventure, it's gonna be on camera ST4. Once you've input all the appropriate information, you can click enter, and now we're gonna be in the main user interface. And there's a lot of buttons here. So the first thing I want you to do is click on the Wi-Fi button at the top of the screen. When you do that, we have even more settings to choose from, but the main thing here is the 2.4G and 5G Wi-Fi options. 2.4, you're gonna get much more range out of it, but it won't be as fast. 5G is going to be a lot faster, but it won't reach as far. So you need to experiment and see what works best for your shooting scenario. Uh, I'm going to leave it on 2.4 for right now. Then moving down, we have DC 12 volt output. If you click on this, you're going to see those four different outputs on the side of your ASIR Pro. You can actually turn them off if you don't need them. That might save some power. Uh, in this case, you can even name them as well. So if I want to name that first one my ASI 1600, then I'll know what's actually connected there. And this should stay, but it's also possible to get wiped out when you reset the ASIR Pro. But you can see I named it, and now I can power off the other three ports because I'm not gonna be using them. There's no point putting power to them. And then I'll hit OK. So that's a nice feature here in the ASIR Pro, and uh, it's really cool. They give you all these different customizable features. Moving on, let's click on the camera icon. That's gonna take us to our main camera settings tab. From here, you can adjust the camera, turn it on or off. You can also adjust the focal length and even the gain. So you can just move the slide around and adjust the gain as needed. My favorite feature though here is the cooling. So if you did connect that power cable to your dedicated astro camera, you can actually control how cold you want the sensor to be. And you can move the slider around, you can choose a preset, but that's a really nice feature that you can do right here from the ASIR Pro app. And that'll help cut down on the noise if you can keep that sensor nice and cold. You can even customize the file names of all your photos. In this case, I chose to add the date just to make sure I stayed organized. If we go down to the next tab, we have our guide settings. And I don't have an auto guider connected today, so I'm not gonna get into this too much, but I wanted to show you that if you go down to the bottom of the guide settings, you can actually control the dither. And if you're not familiar with this, basically when you have dithering turned on and set up properly, it's gonna move your camera very slightly in a random direction after every photo and when you do this, it's gonna to help to reduce some of the banding and the fixed pattern noise that might be visible in your photos. So this is a really powerful tool and you can do it all here from the ASAR Pro and adjust the pixels, how far you want it to dither, the stability, the settle time, etc. And if you're doing your guiding, you can even adjust the uh, different settings here. Moving down next, we have the telescope settings and you just wanna make sure you turn that on before you start shooting. Moving down to the next tab, we have our filter wheel settings and we can control everything from here. First though, I like to edit my filter names. That way they actually fit to the corresponding number. In my first slot, I have my L filter. So I can click there and then choose L. Next we have R, moving down we have G and then B. And then we have my narrowband filters 
oxygen, sulfur, and hydrogen alpha. And then once you put all those in, the system is going to remember those names. And now when you go back to your main filter wheel settings, you can change the position very easily. So we can maybe change over to the red filter if we want to do that. And as soon as you click on that, the filter wheel is automatically going to move and put in the correct filter. Or maybe we can go over to hydrogen alpha. So that's really nice we have that functionality built into the app as well. Finally, we have our focuser settings. This is going to be if you have one of those automated focusers for a telescope. I don't have one though. I don't plan on getting one, so I'm not really going to cover that. But those are the settings if you're interested. And that's the main settings for the ASAR Pro. Next, I want to talk about how to actually take your images and set up a whole workflow here inside of the app. And if you look over on the right, you'll notice we're on preview. And that little circular button over on the right, we can actually take a photo just by clicking it. And right now it's transmitting the photo that I just took. And once it finally transmits, we'll be able to see our image. It's taking quite a while because I'm on 2.4G Wi-Fi, and these are fairly large files. If you're on 5G, it should be quite a bit faster. There's our image though. It doesn't look like much because I'm shooting inside. But you'll notice you can even adjust the exposure settings. And depending on your lighting conditions, you'll need to adjust that to get a properly exposed image. There's also different bin options. I'm leaving on bin one. And moving on, if you click over where it says preview in gold, you can choose focus or polar alignment or anything else. The cool thing is if you go to focus, it's automatically going to zoom in on where you choose. So that's going to help you focus on your stars a lot easier when you get that really high magnification. Once you've focused your image, you can click where it says focus in gold lettering and go down to maybe polar alignment. When you do the polar alignment, really all you have to do is click the play button there on the right. It's going to walk you through step by step what you have to do. And once you make it to the end, you'll now have a very precise polar alignment with your mount. And it's pretty much like sharp cap if you're familiar with that. Once you're done with that though, you can go to auto run. And from here, we're going to control pretty much all of our different camera settings. So if you click the three lines and the three dots, you'll enter the shooting schedule. Then from here, you want to click that big plus button. That's going to bring up all your different options. First, we have our exposure in seconds. You can put any of the presets that you see here, or if you want to do something different, you can click that weird little box icon to the right, and now you can manually enter whatever shutter speed you want. In this case, I'm going to do 55 seconds. Looking down the list, we also have bin. You can do one through four. You can even choose the filter that you want to use, in this case, L. Then we have repeat. That's just how many photos you want to take. So let's take 100 photos with the L filter, and these are going to be light frames. You can actually choose if you want to do light, bias, flat, or dark. Then we'll hit OK. Now, if we want to take even another set of photos, we'll click the plus button, and we'll do another set of 60 second long exposures. This time we're going to use the R filter, though, and we're going to take 100 images. These are going to be lights. We'll hit OK. Then, once we've done that, we can hit the plus button again, and just keep doing this until we've selected all our different filters and set everything up properly. So again, I'll do 60 second long exposures. Now I'm going to be using my green filter and I'm going to take a hundred photos with that as well. And for today's demo, I want to set it up where I'm taking all of my LRGB light frames in an automated sequence. And then once I've done that, I can now create a color image with my monochrome camera. And this is how you'll set everything up here in the app. Once you've taken your light frames though, you might also want to add in bias, flat, or dark frames. And you can automate that all here in the app as well. Although I don't really recommend doing these automated, you're better off doing these manually on your own. But if you wanted to, you can set everything up here. If you're gonna take dark frames, you gotta make sure that the exposure is exactly the same as your light frames, same with the gain. And you have to remember too, when you're taking your darks to go out and put a lens cap on the front of your telescope. Otherwise you're gonna get light and you won't have a dark frame. Uh, some people have like a black filter in their filter wheel. You can do that instead. Just make sure you choose the correct filter there. But this is how you'd automate your darks. I'd recommend taking at least 20 or 30 of them, if not more, usually the more the better. Uh, there's plenty of information on how to take darks online, but that's how you'd automate it here in the app. You can even take your bias frames. So the bias frames, you want to take about 200 of those usually, and these are going to be a very fast shutter speed in this case, 0.01. And the filter again doesn't matter. 
you need to put either a lens cap on the front of your lens so no light reaches the sensor or use a black filter. Finally, you can set up the auto run to include flats as well, but I really don't recommend that because you have to do some special things to get proper flats and you're better off just doing these manually on your own. Uh, there's plenty of information on how to take flats. Very simply though, you put a white t-shirt on the front of your telescope, point it in an evenly lit light source and take about 20 or 30 images. And once you do that, you'll be able to remove any vignette and dust from your final image. Now here in the app, when I hit OK, I'm actually going to get an error. And when I do that, I want you to look at the very bottom of the screen. You'll see the estimated time for all these different photos, as well as the estimated size. So there's a lot of frames being taken here, and it's nice that it tells you all that information. And I do want to mention that the ASAR Probe does come with a 64 gigabyte flash drive that you can plug into any one of the USB ports, and that'll give you a lot more space. In this case, I was just using the built-in SD card, and we only had about 20 or 30 gigs. So bear that in mind. Now I'm going after the target in the upper left. I don't really know if this does anything, but I put in Orion because that's what I was playing on photographing. There's also the Meridian flip. So for those of you who have a automated mount for a telescope with deck and right ascension guiding, uh, you can set up the Meridian flip here. If you have a Sky Guider Pro Star Adventure though, just ignore this. We can't do anything with the Meridian flip. We have to do that manually. But that's how you do your shooting schedule here in the ASIR Pro. Then once everything's ready, you can hit the back button. And now you're gonna click that little circular button on the right and you'll see it's counting down the first exposure. So they're all gonna be 60 seconds. And you see we're on zero of 630 images. So you can let that run as long as you want, but that's how you're gonna take your photos at night. Finally, once you've captured all your images, we need to transfer them here to the laptop so we can begin our editing process. There's a lot of different ways you can do this, but today I'm just gonna show you one example. First, we're gonna turn on the ASIR Pro, and when it's emitting a Wi-Fi network, we should be able to find it here with our laptop, and it should be listed ASIR Pro, or just ASIR right here. Then we can connect to it. Once we're connected, there's a very simple process to transfer all those photos over to our laptop wirelessly. And uh, if you have the 5G option turned on on the ASIR, that will speed things up quite a bit compared to the 2.4G. And as soon as this is done, I'll show you exactly what to do. Okay, I don't know why that took so long, but now we're connected. And if you just come up to your toolbar up here, or the uh, address bar, we can click on it, delete whatever's there, and then we're gonna type backslash backslash ASIR. And then if we hit enter, here we are. We can now see all of our photos. And one of the things I love about this is that it actually named everything exactly as we would expect. Last night, I photographed the Rosette Nebula with a hydrogen alpha filter, and we see all those different frames here. Then it swapped over to oxygen and began taking photos, and then finally sulfur, but that's where I stopped it. So all I have to do now is click on my first and last photo holding down the shift key, right click, copy, and then I'm gonna throw these in my ASI folder right here just to keep it organized, and we'll name this Rosette. Then I can just throw them in here, and we'll see, like I said, it's probably not gonna be that fast, because we're doing it wirelessly. You could always pop out the little SD card and use an adapter and connect that right to your laptop. You can also use a USB uh, stick and plug that into the ASIR Pro and save everything to there. But for me, this is just a nice, simple way to do things. It's not exactly fast, especially if you have a lot of data, but at least we're doing it all wirelessly. And once you get all the images, then we can talk about how to process them, but we'll save that for another video. And that's really all I have for you in today's video. So I hope the ASIR Pro makes a little bit more sense now and you can go out and start taking your own images with your dedicated Astro camera and the ASIR. 